The Jazz Age in the 1920s is a combination of African American tradition, white middle class ideals, and representation of a vast cultural change. The birthplace of jazz is often accredited to African Americans, but many races are responsible for its popularity. Jazz music offers an unpredictable opportunity for Americans to interact with one another regardless of race. But due to racial prejudice at most radio stations, white American jazz artists receive more airtime than blacks. Jazz music had an outstanding effect on the literary branch of the jazz age, introducing the genre jazz poetry. The fashion industry had as much of an impact as jazz itself. Massive changes in dress code and lingo were seen during this age. The women's liberation movement began wearing flappers and progressed in their rebellion against set standard society. For the first time in American history, what was previously considered bottom culture rose to the top and became a highly desired commodity in that day's society. Joe Oliver is one of the most important figures in early jazz. When we use the phrase hot jazz, we are really referring to his style of collective improvisation rather than solos. He was a mentor and teacher of Louis Armstrong. King Oliver's Creole Jazz Band was the most popular band of the early 1920s. This band was originally from New Orleans. King Oliver's Creole Jazz Band was best captured the feel of New Orleans jazz music. Oliver played trombone as a child, but later switched to cornet. He toured with the band, but when he returned to Chicago in 1922, he started King Oliver's Creole Jazz Band. Louis Armstrong, nicknamed Satchmo, Pops, and later Ambassador Satch, was born on August 4, 1901 in New Orleans, Louisiana. Though Armstrong was content to remain in New Orleans in the summer of 1922, he received the a call from King Oliver to come to Chicago and join his Creole jazz band on a second cornet. Armstrong accepted and he was soon taking Chicago by storm with both his remarkably fiery playing and the dazzling two cornet breaks that he shared with Oliver. Later on, Armstrong joined Henderson Orchestra. However, Armstrong's southern background didn't mesh well with the other urban northern mentality of Henderson's other musicians, who sometimes gave Armstrong a hard time over his wardrobe and the way he talked. Henderson also forbade Armstrong from singing, fearing that his rough way of vocalizing would be too coarse for the sophisticated audience at the Roseland Ballroom. Kid Ory was the greatest trombone player in the early years of jazz. He originally played banjo, but then switched to trombone. From 1912 to 1919, he led one of the most popular bands in New Orleans. Ori's band featured many of the great musicians who would go on to divine hot jazz style. At various times, King Oliver, a young Louis Armstrong, Johnny Dodds, Sidney Betchett, and Jimmy Noon all played in Ori's band. In 1922, Kid Ori's orchestra they became the first African-American jazz band of New Orleans to record. They used the name of Spike Seven Pods of Pepper Orchestra. In 